You know, all my life, whether it was at the playground or going to lunch, because I was W. Wilcox, I was always the last. So God bless you, Mark G. Doe. <laughs> you know, you don't get up here and receive a great honor like this without a lot of people playing a role in your life. And uh, I have a lot of those. And it's not about me, it's about we. So I want to spend the bulk of my time thanking the people that helped me get here. But first, I'd like to thank the Allstate Sugar Bowl Committee, Greater New Orleans Hall of Fame Committee for uh, selecting me. My family and myself really, it's truly a great honor, and we want to thank you all for that. I also want to congratulate the other inductees and all you young men and women that received honors tonight. Uh, God bless you all, and I wish you all a lot of success as you finish your careers. You know, just like some of the, the other inductees, uh, my parents played the biggest role in my life. Uh, my mom and my dad, and my dad just passed away not too long ago, but I know he's here with us. I want to thank my mama. She was always there for us, and uh, whether I played good or bad, she was always there to support. So, Mom, will you stand? She's with my sister, Monica, and my brother, Fred, who came. Will you stand? Thank you so much. I love you. Next, I'd like to thank my wife. We've been together since middle school. Not married since middle school, <laughs> but we've been together since middle school. We've been married 37 years. She's my rock, and uh, her and God has blessed me with two beautiful children, probably the greatest accomplishments in my life. And uh, my youngest is here, Casey. My, my oldest just had a baby, so she's in Nashville. But they one's a nurse, one's a lawyer, both productive citizens. And uh, we all, and she's with her husband, Hunter. We all stand. I love y'all. Thank y'all. I moved on to Jefferson Middle School, and I had Bob Morris and Dale Boudreaux as my coaches. And uh, I know I gave Coach Boudreaux a little bit of bad time in seventh grade, but he stuck with me. And in eighth grade, he got me to come out back for not only football, but basketball and baseball. Great man, great teacher. And uh, thank you, Coach, for believing in me. And uh, I thank you so much. <laughs> Next, I went on to Bonneville High School and had uh, Coach Willie Hoff as my coach. A man who organization was it. Uh, he was so far ahead of his time. We went to camp before the season. We went to Grand Isle. We'd do two-a-days. When we were in high school, we had an in-season program, an off-season program. We had scouting reports. We had uh, scouting report, reports broke down, down in distance, and what formation. And uh, I, I just thought all high school coaches did that back then. You know, I got to Alabama and realized, man, some of these guys never touched a weight, and I couldn't believe it. And people ask me all the time, well, was how was you able to start four years at Alabama? And it's because of Coach Willie Hoff. And uh, Coach Hoff is no longer with us. But I asked his wife, Miss Elaine Hoff, and their son Doug, who was a wide receiver for us, if they could come in uh, place of their father. Miss Elaine, will you stand up with Doug? Thank you all so much for sharing coach with me. I had a group of, of assistant coaches at Bonneville High School that are, were unbelievable. Any one of them could have coached at the next level if they choose to do so. They never asked much of us. Just be on time, know your assignments. When you come to practice and game night, bring it. Like Cordell said, bring it. You, you bring it, you come to play. And that's all they asked. And if you did that, they would do anything in the world for you. 
And here we are 40 years later, and every one of them that's alive are here tonight. And they're all standing in the back room. Will all you guys stand up back there? We got Bordel and Bonowitz, Landry, Olivier, Carrigy, Landry, Baracko. I hope I'm not missing anybody. But thank you guys. I share, yeah, I said Carrigy. I share this with y'all. We have a lot of Bonneville players here tonight. Thank you all, too, for coming. Really appreciate it. Then uh, I moved on to Alabama. And I had so many people that said I was too small, wasn't fast enough, you'd never make it. But Coach Bryant seen something in me, and uh, thank God. He, he came, he never promised me a, my high school jersey, never promised me a starting position, never promised me any money, no, no car, no plane, no nothing. <laughs> uh, but what he did say, is that I'm going to give you the opportunity to get a first-class education if you choose to do so. He said, I'm going to give you the opportunity to compete and earn you a starting job. I'm going to give you the opportunity, because this was before ESPN tells you how old I am. He said that I'll, I'll give you a chance, back then there were three networks, give you a chance to play on television for your family, so your parents brothers and sisters and coaches could see you. And he said, I'll give you the chance to win a national championship if you work hard. So I stand here tonight with diamond rings on. He kept his promise. Thank you, Coach Bryan. Yeah. I want to tell, I want to go back just one and tell a little story because everybody said, you don't want to play for Alabama. Coach Bryant's mean. He's He's, he's been known to kick people in the butt and to grab you around your face mask and throw you. Well, since the statute of limitations are out, I want to tell this story about Coach Bonowitz and Coach Bordelon at Bonneville High School. We were in a scrimmage one day, and a guy did what you did not supposed to do, and that's quit, in the middle of the scrimmage. And the locker room was only about 60 yards away from from where we were practicing. And by the time that kid got to the back end of the locker room, Bordelon and Bonowitz had his helmet, shoulder pads, his, all his knee pads, thigh pads, had his cleats. The only thing the guy had left on was his half T-shirt, his jock strap, and his socks. <laughs> I, no, I think they got his socks. But... uh. So when people told me, you don't want to go play for Coach Bryant because he's too mean, I said, look, I've been through that already at Bonneville High School. You know, I want to just tell you one story about Coach Bryant and I'll end. Everybody asks me all the time, is it true about this? Is it true about that? Is it true about that? Yes. Everything you heard or read about him, he was all that and more. And just to give you a, a he was tough, he was mean, but he was fair. And if you did, if you went to school and you did what you were supposed to do, and me like Cordell, I had to go back a couple years to get mine, but I got it. <laughs> and, uh, but here's a story that kind of sums up Coach Bryan. I had a good friend that I later met. It was wide receiver, Keith Pugh. He was a quarterback in high school, came to Alabama on a recruiting trip. His father drove a truck. He was away from his family all week. And he stepped in Coach Bryant's office and said, Coach, if my son comes to play for you, can you promise me that my son won't have to drive a truck the rest of his life and be away from his family Monday through Friday? And they said Coach Bryant was, had that chest to fill and he spit a little bit and, and without hesitating said, Mr. Pugh, I can't promise you that if Keith comes here, that he won't drive a truck the rest of his life. But I can tell you this, if he does come here, he'll be a hell of a truck driver. <laughs> so that pretty much sums up what Coach Bryant was all about. <laughs> Let me just end by saying this. Coach Bryant had a famous saying. And he said, no matter how talented you are, there's always somebody out there more talented than you are. No matter how smart you are, 
There's always somebody out there smarter than you are. But he said, never let either one of them outwork you. As long as you're willing to pay the price, you'll have days like this where you can come up here and speak. Thank you all. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tommy. Our fourth and final inductee for the 2016 class is former Tulane great from the River Parishes at that, Mark Zeno. <laughs> 